Hey there, BookTube. Noah. Everyone who reads it must converse as a channel. Today, I'm going to talk about my second Faulkner reading in preparation for the uh, Faulkner in August 2021. I had read in July here, The Sound and the Fury. I was lucky enough to get this Norton Critical Edition because The Sound and the Fury uh, definitely can benefit for some supplemental reading, things like that. But it's not necessary. I find that, um, just to say, like, kind of what Faulkner does, and with my limited uh, Faulkner, I've only read As I Lay Dying and uh, Short Stories from School, right? So, what Faulkner is, it may be an understatement, but Faulkner is not concerned with giving you a standard delivery of narrative. What he wants to do is wow you. He wants to deliver a narrative in a way that is unique and special and even experimental. Uh, there's, there's all these different ways you could describe it. But what it comes down to is he's not concerned and, and, and it, it might be across all of his works. I don't know. We'll see. We're reading Sanctuary in August. He is not concerned with giving you a story that you understand and enjoy fully, that you can fully uh, work everything out in one read. What he wants to do is to give you a story that you develop a relationship with. And it is a joy to develop that relationship with William Faulkner's works. As I Lay Dying is such an amazing experience. And The Sound and the Fury as well is such a wild, deep, awesome experience to read it. I find myself going, oh man, this is Faulkner. This is Faulkner. Why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't anyone tell me? Uh, quit picking up other stuff. You haven't read, uh, you know... Faulkner enough go and do that right now that's what you need to do because it is it is amazing and especially since Faulkner is a southern writer I mean this this dark southern gothic style writing um but on a very very high level it's 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 right up my alley this is this is an amazing work in the way that it is told from four different perspectives and there's no possible way to get it and to understand it on one read through. Benji's section, which is section number one, ends up being an amazing kind of overview and telling of exactly the, the entire novel and all of the characters and their places within the family, what they go through, and all that kind of stuff. But you can't understand that on the first read-through because you don't know all of these characters. You don't know their places within the family enough. But Benji is, is, is a beautiful section just because it is so much um, imagery and senses. It's almost a tidal wave of sense descriptions very poetic i mean it's like you smell you hear you see you feel all of what benji is going through and it and it's almost like a you know a, a complete overwhelming sensory experience i i loved that first part even though i didn't really understand what was going on but i went and uh, read it again Right, right after finishing this novel, I went and, f and read the first section again. Um, and and it, it's a joy. It's just a joy. It reads so quick. These characters are the epitome of dark southern um, tragedy. Dark southern tragic characters. The only character that is that where where you see 
some kind of love being shown, real love and care and concern, is Caddy. Caddy towards Benji. And that relationship is doesn't doesn't mean anything to this family. Benji doesn't mean anything to this family except a burden. And Caddy is the only one who shows any kind of real love and care for Benji. And there's and there's just no value placed on that. It's very heartbreaking. Faulkner is heartbreaking for sure. Faulkner is very very effective at what he does. His writing is is very very effective. And um, I was talking with some of the readers of this one. I read it with Yasmin at To the Lit House, Christina at Knitting Books, etc., and then a couple of friends from Instagram that uh, I feel completely uh, at you know uh, I trust Faulkner as a as a writer that even though you don't know what's going on and and you might have to think about it, dig a little deeper, reread things. I, I, I totally trust Faulkner in delivering something that's going to be at the end of it, that I'm glad that I read it. And this is that is, that is an understatement to say that I'm glad that I read it. Because The Sound and the Fury, uh, along with As I Lay Dying, and we'll see. Uh, with other Faulkner books, I have that I've only read these two now. It will be a joy to revisit them. It will be a joy to continue the relationship with this book. And these characters are so well realized, so deeply realized. It, it it's just I can't speak to it highly enough. I would say. Uh, it's, it's an amazing book. I wouldn't say that I like it more than As I Lay Dying. But As I Lay Dying was my first Faulkner. And I do have a long way to go with this book. I have a lot more uh, relationship ahead of me with reading The Sound and the Fury. What Faulkner does in this, exploring time. And he does it uh, with the narrative. And he does it through different characters in their psychology, Quentin especially. But he also does it with the way that the, the, the words and the story is on the page and the way that it's delivered. It's very tangible. These kind of things uh, lend themselves to a lot of uh, intellectual exploration, which is what I, something that I love with a book. And on, on some level, it's just a story. It's the story of the fall of a southern family from a place where they might be upper middle class or uh, something like that to complete ruin. I mean, uh, it's just at the end of it. It, it, you know, we're talking about it and I'm like, you know, there's really like not even any family there anymore. There's just the two uh, that won't give up. That's Jason and Jason's mother, who are actually very much alike, very uh, self, uh, you know, kind of got this self-righteous air, but victimizing themselves. They're, they're playing the victim to, to, to life all the time. Uh, the mother is a, like a hypochondriac that's always sick. And always complaining. And Jason is, you know, has has given up so much in his life just to work a, a mediocre job and provide for the family. And, you know, blames everybody else for that. Blames others for his decision making and that kind of stuff. And, and that's just it. But the final part of this, and I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about it a little bit. I'm not going to spoil too much. But just to say what it does... I think, is Faulkner gives us a, a character that we've known the whole time. It's Dilsey, the, uh, the caretaker, servant, and her, Dilsey's family. 
through the years. We get their story, and it's like how to cope with this insane, dysfunctional family. Very, very um, effective writer. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know what you think about what I've said. And I'll catch you on the next one, book two. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.